England. Uh -huh. um, after that, I quickly moved to London. Um, while in London, I was based in a salon. I was also based in an academy, uh -huh. so I was a teacher there um, for many years. After that, I moved then to New York, where I did a lot of um, photographic work, like studio work, photo shoots and, and what have you. Then I came to Hong Kong, where I did again a lot of education work and a lot of um, TV work. So working with a lot of the local singers here in the 90s. Did a lot of traveling with them. At the same time, did a lot of education in China and Taiwan. Um, and as well as based in the salon as well. And then after that, I moved to Beijing, where I opened a, a salon there, a partnership in a salon there. Um, went back to teaching because I don't really like being a boss. <laughs> it's not for me. Management and bo being a boss is not for me. I enjoy doing the work, not managing people and attitudes. So uh, I went back to education again and then eventually was brought back to Hong Kong uh, by a salon who needed a, a balayage specialist. Mm -hmm. So this is why I came back here. So now I've got my, developed my own, basically my own brand, my own name, um, my website, um, and my own personality, so I focus on, on uh, just working with clients, is what I love to do. So the one-on-one -on -one appointments that we talked about, as we've seen today with this lady here. How to select a hairstylist? Well, you have to check the background of the, the salon, you have to check the background of the person who is going to do your hair. I recommend if the person's never done your hair before, that you maybe go in there for a, a simple shampoo and blow dry. So you can ask the person to find out if the person's attentive, if they're knowledgeable, if they can answer your questions correctly, uh, clearly enough that you can understand. But they, their knowledge and their consultation should be able to convince you that they know what they're doing or not. If they can't answer your questions, if they can't, uh, if they don't have the attitude of communication, as in to explain to you what you need and maybe think about it or take more time to, to research because the consultation is very important not only to find out what you what you want to do with your hair but also for you to get to know the stylist too so that's something I do I, I welcome clients in for free consultations uh, without the obligation of making an appointment uh, many people make the appointment straight after if there's time I can do straight away which sadly usually isn't the case because it's usually quite busy um, but it's, it's an open door for the client to ask challenging questions, you know, ask to clarify certain things about what they want to do with their hair, to make sure the person really knows what they're doing. And my iPad too. So what I use is for the consultations is my iPad. These have all the pictures that you'll find on my website. And these are real, real examples of clients that I've done. So they're on Photoshopped, and they are pictures of clients as they were when they left the salon. There's an example of a big color correction that was done, but that's how she looked just before she left the salon. So there's no special lighting, there's no Photoshop, nothing. So I like to use real examples because when you want an authentic result, you need to see an authentic picture. What I don't use is a shade guide, a colour chart that you find in a salon because it's only for stylists to choose the, the, the depth and the tone of the colour. It's incorrect to show a client because it's, it gives an unrealistic uh, example of something you can't achieve. That's where problems happen, that's where disasters happen and that's where people end up sitting in this chair. But anyway, so, just, <laughs> so that's what we, so we start with that consultation. Um, then we talk, we talk about the haircut uh, first anyway. I mean, in this lady's case, she has a rainbow of colors going on here. <laughs> so we, we talked about that first. But usually what I'll do is I'll talk about the hairstyle first because mm -hmm. every all the color work needs to work with the haircut or the hairstyle, not the other way around. Mm -hmm. So in this case, we, we talked a little bit before you came, so we're keeping the length. Mm -hmm. We're adding more movement and more shape mm -hmm. around the front, more shape, and also a little bit more in movement in the back because right now the hair is very long and it comes all the way down to the bottom there so there's no movement there so I'm going to cut the hair first and then we'll go into the color so it's a very very big transformation this one because it's it's just about the, the, 
the best example of a you know, before and after you could probably find. And I'm cutting the hair dry because I want to see the movement. Mm -hmm. I don't always cut it dry. Uh, but in this case, because we, I just want to see the movement and work with the texture a little bit more. Because I work with the shape, um, as in when we finish the haircut, the lady should be able to wash and go. If you want to style it, of course, it's going to look even better. But if you don't, the haircut should sit and the shape should sit in a nice way also. So that's the way. And usually if I, if I, if I do a haircut from wet, I will dry the hair off and let the client see the shape after. So they can see that the layers are sitting nice. And but sometimes you go to the salon and they do the, the haircut, they blow dry it nice, you go home, you wash it, and it looks like what happened after. So I don't work that way. I work very technically with the, the way I cut. I often tell clients that I cut hair in a very English way and I colour hair like a Frenchman. Because all this is very frayed. Because if it's cut too short or the layers are too too many or cut incorrectly, it can just sit in a very weird way. So this is another reason why I like to cut the hair dry. Not all, like I say, not all the time, but. Mm -hmm. It really depends on the hair. So you have many Indian clients? I, I do actually. Mm -hmm. Quite a number now. And it seems like a little bit more and more too. Mm -hmm. I believe you visited India. Can you many just, times. You know, yeah. Many times. Great. Many, many, yeah. many times. I sent you some pictures on it. So. Right. So how was your experience? Yeah, it's great. I have many friends there. Oh, really? Yeah. Went mostly to the north. Uh -huh. Through the, through the 1990s that was. Mm -hmm. you took like a Steve Jobs journey to India? Absolutely. <laughs> Did a lot of charity work there too. Oh. Yeah. Raising money for medical equipment, for mm -hmm. hosp hosp uh, um, rural hospitals. Mm -hmm. Sponsored three kids too. Mm -hmm. oh. For about 10 years. So, how did you get into uh, this profession? Uh, well, art was the only thing I was good at at school, uh -huh. and um, <laughs> way back then the teachers didn't have much patience if you, if you weren't academically uh -huh. proficient, and you know, so I left school quite early, uh -huh. fell in with a bunch of quite arty people, uh -huh. and eventually somebody suggested this job, you know, because being sociable and also being creative, uh -huh. um, it was a perfect fit. So how long have you been in uh, this business? In this business, mm -hmm. uh, 33 years. How many? 33. I started when I was 21, mm -hmm. actually, just, no, 20 actually, just, just before mm -hmm. I became 21 I started this business. So I've already given the age away. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Those are good at, <laughs> Indians are very good at maths, I know that. <laughs> yeah, I was oh, good. Oh, really? <laughs> exactly, I know. Yeah, we, yeah. Well, I'm young at heart though, so. Mental calculations. <laughs> very, very lucky in that I really enjoy what I do. Uh -huh. I'm very lucky nice. that way. I really, 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 really enjoy uh -huh. what I do. Because it's going to be a massive transformation after. Yes. And, and the result, you know, it will... Absolutely. It's, it will get a huge buzz out of it. So. so we selected a right model for you, huh? I think so, yeah. Probably just, just about the best example I like. What I tend to do, because uh -huh. I treat, I'm, I'm treating this situation as a, as a real experience of uh -huh. how I do clients. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I, when you make an appointment, for example, today, mm -hmm. uh, nobody else is going to turn up. So I don't do multiple appointments. The time you, you have, it's usually a three hour window. Mm -hmm. For a job like this, it's usually about three hours. That's including the cut as well. Mm -hmm. So I allow for that time for the client. And I think my clients really appreciate that. One, because the work is very technical mm -hmm. and you cannot pass to an assistant this type of work. Um, sure. And two, that's just part of my service. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a seven step service mm -hmm. that I do, which includes consultation, it includes aftercare, it includes, you know, what we do with the, creating the shape, complementary color, mm -hmm. uh, treatment, follow up. Mm -hmm. All those elements are in there. But I just like to work personal. So I don't do 
a phenomenal amount of clients every day, don't mm -hmm. do lots of volume, you know, half an hour's attention from the person that you made the appointment with. So for me, I just really don't work that way. I've done a lot of education in this business too, so when mm -hmm. I'm talking, I feel like I'm back on stage again teaching. Uh, yeah. With all the explanations, you know. But it's good for clients because mm -hmm. sometimes people want to know what's going on because you can find clients who are very nervous, maybe mm -hmm. they've had very bad experiences, and um, you know, their trust level has gone right down because mm -hmm. of that. So I like to explain what I'm doing and why I'm doing it let them see and feel relaxed mm -hmm. in the process. So any questions you have as well. It's, it's so you good. also teach mentors? Uh, I have for a while inspiring. actually, because uh -huh. I'm too busy in the salon and I really enjoy I you know, getting, doing it. Mm -hmm. So it's starting to come alive a bit now with the, the shape. You can, with the hair being dry, I can see how I can balance the, the weight here. Yeah. So this is how mm -hmm. she's going to dry this at home, nine awesome. times out of ten. I don't think I can't see you with a brush for three hours in the morning. Mm -hmm. Blow drying this, so it needs to look good, okay. even though you do absolutely nothing with it. And some of the pictures I have on there are actually taken by, you know, selfies taken by clients outside mm -hmm. in the street or on a beach somewhere. Oh. And the hair still looks great. So nice. that's a perfect example. <laughs> you know, if it can look good in those conditions, then low maintenance, it needs to be manageable, it needs to look good when you don't do too much to it. Can it go straight? It's not coming kind of straight. No, no, not straight. I I did it for many years and I've actually spoiled my hair. <laughs> and when I realized it was it was too late then. Yeah, no. Yeah. Because when it grows out you're left with a very funny looking texture. Yes, and then you get it done again because you don't want to look exactly. funny or you want to have like even looking hair. And then it'll just damage. Yeah. Alright, I think we're done. So you can see the difference already. Yes, already. And that's just frizzy, not washed, not done anything to. I see it so so clearly the shape. Oh. And it's light, more movement going on now in there. And I like to show the quite the, the result to in the back area. So you can see the movement there. We got all the lengths, I haven't touched any at all. Just a nice layer there. Right, phase one complete. How about the colors? Uh, when someone wants to select a color, how would you advise them? I would advise them by showing examples, real examples of, like I say, with clients I do, I've done, examples that I have, um, reference pictures like that, also matching the skin tone. Uh, with ball I do a lot of balayage work, so I'm working with contrasting, and it's a complementary technique. So it's an enhancing technique uh, where it enhances your natural hair color and doesn't eliminate your natural hair color. So your natural hair color combined with the skin tone, mm -hmm. the color should be complementary to that. So a stylist will be able to advise you, a good stylist will be able to advise you what color tone is suitable for your hair, and not just say what you want. So typically how much time you uh, spend with each client. <coughs> client walks in for the point. If it's a, if it's a, a really big makeover, mm -hmm. you're talking about haircut mm -hmm. um, and styling mm -hmm. and all the color work. It's within three hours. Mm -hmm. A typical appointment, if it's if it's a more of a maintenance mm -hmm. or a, like an upkeep, mm -hmm. then you're looking at about uh, within two hours. Mm -hmm. So each appointment usually is like that. Mm -hmm. So balayage is like pencil shading when you draw a picture you have a white piece of paper and a pencil mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you're using the pencil uh, to create shading mm -hmm. which 
presents you with a picture, like an image. So balayage is exactly like that, but mm -hmm. working with hair. So your hair is the white, is like the white paper. Mm -hmm. This is like creating the contrast on the white paper. Mm -hmm. So that's the layman's term, terms way I explain it to clients that can understand the difference. Next now? Now we're, now we're creating the contrast. I see. Starting to create the contrast. Mm -hmm. So this is the color, blue color. Is it going to give a blue shade? No, no, no. This mm -hmm. is going to make the hair lighter. I see. So this is removing the, mm -hmm. the old color from in, in a lighter way. to have a look what exactly he does mm -hmm. and I saw a few pictures which I had seen on uh, Facebook and there he was tagged as the hair doctor mm -hmm. so I was like oh you're the hair doctor <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's that's nice so how you got this hair doctor name Steve so I was given this name by a client mm -hmm. um, when I lived in China Mm -hmm. uh, she was doing a, a social event for a lot of ladies mm -hmm. um, regarding like a, a coffee afternoon mm -hmm. where we, lots of ladies were invited uh, for a hair consultation. Mm -hmm. some, some tea, some cookies, some, you know, talk, let's talk about hair. Mm -hmm. So she advertised me as the hair doctor is coming to town. Mm. And the name stuck. So a website came out of it and uh, mm -hmm. you know, like a bit of a brand name if you like. Mm -hmm. um, and then since then, you know, since I did now do a lot of color corrections mm -hmm. for distraught ladies who've had bad hair color done, um, the name is just stuck you now, so it's taking on a, a life of its own. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good. Yeah, it's the right name actually. Right yeah. name. Yeah. 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 You're treating your hair, yeah. I mean, I would say bad hair sometimes. So it's a bit like a patient really. Yeah, like in exactly. this case, you know, the color was there, finish this side, just the other side, and then cook you under the infrared heat for about 20 minutes, mm -hmm. and it's done. So we go to the basin after, just do the toning uh, on the contrast that we've created, and then that's it. It's just like uh, there's a canvas and you're painting it. That's all right. Yes. Yeah, it looks like that. And canvas is on hand. Yeah, yeah. 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 that's very convenient. Interesting. Very interesting, in fact. Yeah. I haven't seen this. Yeah, me too. Yeah, lots of Indian food. So what kind of food do you like? Mm. One of my favorites is uh, alu mutter or alu gobi. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> yeah, that's quite like, simple. Right? Yeah, very simple. Yeah, because when I travel in India a lot, you know, you, I, I did a lot of a lot of road journeys there. Mm -hmm. So you know, they stop in these roadside oh, restaurants where yeah. people can just make the food from zero. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. That's uh, it's it's the, nice. one of the most like tastiest food that it is, isn't it? Yeah, because it's just yeah. freshly made and it's just yeah, literally yeah. some little the spices and everything are yeah. freshly uh, made. Some little stone house on the side of the yeah. road somewhere in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Lots of long train journeys too. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Darjeeling right down to to Delhi, to, to Bihar, to all over. Mm -hmm. I went to Gujarat once. Gujarat. How did you find the food there? I'm a Gujarati, so I would want to know. Oh, nice, yeah. Like, interesting. Yeah, very interesting. Very heavy kind of food, right? Yeah. I was actually there on a, on a charity job. Uh -huh. I used to work with a lot of singers here in the 90s, and one lady did a, did a was an ambassador for Orbis, you know, the, uh -huh. the eye hospital. Yeah, yeah. Flying one, and it was, um, and it was, uh, you know, I, I did a hair for the, for the filming because she was going. She was, so we flew to India to do the, uh, to follow them, you know, to uh, it was quite quite an experience. No, it's not a super high profession over there, is it? So, 
Uh, I think now it's just like gradually. Now it's better. Mm. Yeah. Oh no, maybe in Bollywood is. Especially more. like mm. in uh, metro cities. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, in in a rural area it is different. The concept yeah. is different. It's still that uh, traditional concept. Yeah. Uh, but in the metros now we have uh, the stylish style of the professions. Thriving. I will tell you, one person I did once. I was in a, when I was in the salon here. I spent a little bit of time in my friend's salon, who has the salon in the Shangri La Hotel. So in this India, so I said, okay, I'll do the ladies' hair, and then somebody else can do the to the man, you know. So I talked to this lady, very, very, very pleasant, very nice lady. What are your key clients are talking about you? And so what is your expertise when they say? My expertise is doing the color contrasting work, mm -hmm. so all the blended coloring, which is complementary. Mm -hmm. It's it's color that actually complements mm -hmm. uh, the lady and makes beautifies mm -hmm. rather than just putting color in the hair. Mm -hmm. So the majority of the clients I have mm -hmm. are for that type of work. I do precision haircuts too, mm -hmm. but it seems like you know 99.9% .9 of the clients I have mm -hmm. want some degree of color work. Right. And when they recommend to their friends, what do they say? Uh, what do they say? Uh, I just I think the quality of the work, the attentive to detail, the personal service, the the one-on-one -on -one service. I don't do multiple appointments. Mm -hmm. um, the communication skills, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, the aftercare advice, mm -hmm. explaining the process, making mm -hmm. people feel at ease. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I think I think the fact that the quality of the of the photos that I take after, mm -hmm. which are not studio photos, I don't mm -hmm. do studio photos. Mm -hmm. All the photos on my website and Facebook page and, and Instagram are all photos of clients that have literally just about to walk out of the salon, as you'll see in a minute with the lady when we finish. Sure. Thank you, Steve. All right. Thank you.